Hello friends, I'm Saket Pansal. I'm a lead trainer at Eisen Peace Consultancy Private Limited. And today I'm talking about how to fill your experience in PMP application form. Now a lot of time I get query from PMP aspirants that what is this 4500 or 4500 hours of experience is all about. Now you might be knowing that in order to get qualified or be, meet the eligibility criteria of PMP, you need to have 4,500 hours of leading and directing project work experience. Now, this 4,500 hours works well if you have a four years of degree, like 16 years of education. If you don't have that, then you need to have 7,500 hours, which is five years of leading and directing project work experience. Now, what this leading and directing term mean as a test taker to you? Now, PMI has made another document which is called PMP examination content outline and in this particular document they have explained what is this leading and directing project work uh, is all about. They have identified five domains and these five domains are having type of tasks which a project manager or a typical PMP certified person should be performing. These five domains are initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling, and closing. Now the initiating the project, the first domain out of these five is all about doing the work which is required in order to start a project, like helping your sponsor in preparing the project charter, doing a stakeholder identification, identifying who all are important for this particular project, or helping stakeholders or a business manager to prepare a business case for a given project or involved in activities like cost benefit analysis. So if you have multiple projects to select from involvement in doing a cost benefit analysis or identifying which project you should select is also falls under initiating project process group or initiating project a domain. You may also be involved in doing high level scoping because before you start a project, you need to identify what this is all about. High level project scope, high level risk identification, documenting assumptions during the beginning at the initial stage of, of your projects. So these all types of tasks falls under initiating domain, planning the project. And planning is one of the critical activity which project manager does. What do you do in planning? You start with a high level scope, which is coming from initiating the project, the previous domain which we have discussed. Now, once you have that high level scope, you try to identify detailed task or you first document this high level scope into a detailed scope. So you prepare a detailed scope statement. You may also create a work breakdown structure, a graphical or a hierarchical representation of a given scope and after having a scope documented you try to identify activities or tasks which you should be doing or you should be getting done so that we can achieve the project scope so you do an activities like identifying tasks or an activities after identifying those tasks and activities you also think about who should be doing this work so you allocate resources to them. You also think of what is the best way of organizing this schedule. So you do all schedule analysis, critical path analysis. Doing, doing all these things, you also need to plan about recruiting human resource. You also need to look at risks that do we have any risk in this given area. You can't forget about money. So you also need to prepare a budget. You need to estimate what all it will take to finish this particular work. You may also end up hiring someone for doing a part of work. So you also do a procurement planning. You try to identify what all work can be outsourced. You may also do a communication planning that how frequently you are going to send your reports, details to external stakeholders. You also plan that how are you going to manage or ensure that organization quality policies get implemented well in your projects. 
so these all types of activities these all or type of tasks falls under planning domain now third domain area executing the project so you have done with the planning now it's time to get the work done now when you are planning you are thinking about that these would be the sequence of activities these are the guys who would be working on it now you need to get those guys working on that particular thing and while working if they find any issue you need to manage that if they have any conflict you need to resolve it if they need any help from any other party you need to get it done so in executing you ensure that whatever quality plan whatever scope plan you have made in your planning process they really get executed so you ensure the adherence to quality you ensure adherence to given scope you also ensure that in between whenever there is a conflict those get resolved you also try to build a team so you do a team development or you also pro, uh, perform an individual performance assessment so these kind of activities falls under executing domain of the uh, out of these five the fourth domain now what we did we made a plan and we started working on it now we should have a domain or a type of task which ensures that we are working as per plan or a task which also identify where are the variances so the monitoring and controlling process is the monitoring and controlling domain is all about that where we start with a plan then we take data from executing so something is happening activities are getting done and we do a variance analysis in order to ensure that things are things remains as per plan if something has to be changed because as you start executing you may get new ideas you may get new requests so the change management is one of the important part of monitoring and controlling process activities like filling a change request getting it reviewed doing a assessment for those change request participating in change control board explaining their reasons behind those change all falls under monitoring and controlling process group or monitoring and controlling domain activities like controlling scope like ensuring that people whatever has been developed from executing is matching with our planning so supporting a user acceptance testing kind of activity falls under monitoring and controlling so if you are involved in uat you are performing or facilitating a one of the activity coming from monitoring and control quality control a, a set of individuals ensuring that things are adhering to the specification also falls under monitoring and controlling uh, process uh, domain activities like keeping eye on risks keeping eye on your vendor ensuring that he is working as per the given contract also falls under monitoring and controlling process domains the final domain the fifth one all about closing the project so when you are done with your work you need to take final acceptance you need to also record your learnings you you also need to record whatever kind of documents which you have generated like contracts you have signed or contracts you have closed with your vendors when you close a project so closing a project is all about archiving documents archiving lesson learned updating organization process assets so that people can take learning from your project also taking final acceptance from your customer usually you may get involved in an activity where you need to take a sign off from a customer on the basis of that particular sign off your finance department may can generate an invoice so whatever is needed to legally close the project is falls under closing process group it will also fall like conducting a lesson learned meeting kind of activities will also falls under a close process group or close project domain now you have understood all the project process domains you understand that there is initiating planning executing monitoring and controlling and closing and as a project manager you need to have experience in all these five processes you need to be performing all activities or some of those activities which i have discussed in the uh, in this video now once you are done with it you need to think about how to fill all this in your pmp application form now filling all this in pmp application form is a five step process first you need to fill a basic details related to your project second 
you need to fill a basic details related to your organization for whom you were performing this particular project. Third, you need to fill a detail or a contact detail of a person who was working with you or the person who can tell or who can verify or who can help others or a PMI to validate that yes, you have been working on this particular project. After that, you need to fill the fourth step. You need to fill your hours of experience or hours you spent divided or distributed in these five domain areas which we have discussed in our previous sections. And finally, you need to write a summary, the fifth step, summary level project detail or summary level your role and responsibility detail related to that particular project. Step one, project information. Very simple. First, you need to write a title about your project, like what a summary level, a small title which can tell about a given project, its start date, its end date, the role you played in that particular project. It's not necessary that role should match with your designation. You may be having a designation of team leader, but you might have played a role of project manager in that particular project. So you need to select the role. And there is another field which talks about in which industry. There is a drop down this project was all about. So these are the four basic information you need to write in step one. Step two is all about organization details. It's like a physical address, phone number, state, country, these kind of details related to your organization. If you are working or if you, are, if you have performed multiple projects in the same organization, you can write these organization details once and you can pick it from the saved organization also. So while you are filling it, you no need to write the same organization details again and again. Step three. You need to write an email detail, a phone number, a relationship between you and that primary contact person. Like how this person was related with you and his contact details. Now while you are filling this particular information, do take care about the fact that in case you get selected for the audit, you need to take signature from this particular person. So identify a person who is approachable to you. Step 4. Now distributing your hours in these five domains. Now we spoke about these five domains. In this particular step, if you have, for example, spent 2000 hours in a given project, you need to divide these 2000 hours in five domains, initiating, planning, monitoring, and executing, monitoring and controlling and closing. Now, you don't have to use very scientific method for this division. You can use some judgment. And it is also not necessary that you have experience in all these five domains in all the projects. In total, uh, if you are having a four years degree and if you are approaching for 4,500 hours, in 4,500 hours, you must have experience in all these five domains. But for a given particular project, it's not necessary that you have experience in all the five areas. There is a possibility you were not involved during the initial stage of that particular project. You started uh, the project from planning phase. So in that particular case, you don't have to distribute hours in a initiating activities. Now, a lot of time people wonder that how do, we do they calculate uh, these particular hours? In general, I work with one year more or less equals to 2000 hours. So if you are spending like three years, as, as, as per the PMI application also, 4,500 hours in three year time period. So you can work with nearby 2,000 hours an annum. You can work with 170, 160 hours per month kind of figure in order to identify uh, your experience in a given project. And do remember, if you are running two projects in parallel, only one will get considered. So it's better to fill the application in a way where you don't have parallel projects. Now, final step. And here you need to type your experience in maximum 500 words. Try to pick activities from all those five domains where you are mentioning the hours. Now, we spoke about various activities which are falling under various domains. If you have shown that you were involved in initiating process, initiating domain, then do pick an activity 
in your description which shows that yes you performed something which falls under initiating like helping project sponsor in preparing a, a project charter or identifying high level risks. So this rule you should follow for all the five process domains and as per your hour distribution give a majority so also the description should also match with your distribution of hours in a five domains. So for example if you are showing a good number of hours in planning then when you are dis uh, making a description you must write more and more activities which were linked to planning. A simple, so it, it up to you, you may write a paragraph statement or you may write a bullet point statement. I usually prefer a bullet point statement because it's easy for a learner to write and also reader to read. So you can just specify that I was involved in identifying high level risk, I was involved in doing stakeholder analysis, I performed uh, uh, risk analysis. So this kind of small small statements communicates that yes you have been working on leading and directing project work and uh, also makes you eligible for the PMP application. <clears throat> so in summary this is how you can follow the complete experience part of your PMP application. It's quite simple. Just be clear that you don't have to be very scientifically accurate about the numbers. Try to pick the activities which maps with your domain mapping and try to identify a right person for your contact. So who, who can be contacted in case of your audit get selected, uh, your application got selected for audit. Till now we have not seen any example where PMI is making call or an email to a given individual but that can happen and it usually happen when somebody complains about you. So better you find a right person for uh, that particular job. In case you have any query related to PMP application process, you can come to us, you can join, you can post that particular query in our forum or contact me through any of our social channel. Thanks for watching our video on PMP certification experience filling.